Greetings and welcome to all of our webcast attendees around the globe. And thank you so much for carving out time here in the busy holiday season. And on a Monday, no less, to join us for the 12 step program for reclaiming your spirit of hospitality from the grasp of cynicism. Well, a few shout outs first, as we always do. First of all, I, this has been a great year. This is the first time that we've done the KTM webcast on our own. In the past, we've done webcasts sponsored by other vendor partners, but this year, starting in, some of you have been with us the whole time, starting in February, we have produced this webcast. We could not have done it without Track, a travel net solution, Travel Outlook, the premier hotel call center, and of course, Better Talent. They sponsor this, which helps us get the word out and promote. I know a lot of you know us because your clients, perhaps clients of them, but they help us promote and get the word out around the world, which is, enables us to have such a great turnout. We have over 120 that have joined us today. So if you're, if you're uh, clients of any of those, if they're vendor partners of yours and you have a moment, I would love it if you did a shout out to them, whether you send an email or maybe do a LinkedIn post and tag their company so they know and so a few shout outs wow we have a mixed bag i love to sit here and right before this webcast i look at the registration list because otherwise i just have a little black dot on my webcam here and i have to imagine all the people joining me but a few shout outs we have a lot of hotel management companies and brands jennifer reed from mcneil great to have you joining us again laura ruby and team from rosewood hotels I think you have signed up for every single webcast this year, and I could probably say that about a lot of you here today, but Laura, I have noticed it, and I hope to catch you very soon to catch up. Westmont Hospitality Group, you have been coming on strong the last few months. We have a lot of people signed up. Omni, Paulette, welcome back. Countries, we have a lot of folks from the Nizuk Resort Cancun. I have many clients on here, and I do not want to play favorites, but I will say this, the top five most beautiful hotels I've ever seen. Check out Niza, N-I-Z Zebra, U-C-K, U-C Cat. Niza, Cancun, oh, you'll be amazed just by the photos. Majestic Resorts, all of my friends down in Punta Cana. I think the whole call center team is gonna watch this. I cannot wait to see you again in February, our fourth visit in less than a year. And then Rion, Fantasyland, I know you're working with Kate on our webcast series. Victoria Wagner, are you the same one? And Germany, by the way, I forgot to mention, Rion is up in Calgary, Italy, uh, Calgary, <laughs> Calgary, uh, Alberta, in um, Canada. <laughs> Victoria Wagner, last time I saw you was in Italy, but I think you're in Germany if you're the same Victoria Wagner that was at Leading Hotels of the World for many years. Luxury Hotels, Jordan from the Washington Athletic Club out in Seattle, thank you. Yvonne from Armand, New York. Uh, Nicholas from the Biltmore, Coral Gables, practically a neighbor once again. Jennifer, from, Jennifer Craig from Otisaga, I know you've been with us all year. And a lot of vacation rental companies, South Padre Getaways, Jessica, Lisa, hello. Sun Realty, Sophia and team, say hello to Janice, Ali, all of my friends. You'll be having uh, Calvin Stovall, who is a KTN network, training partner coming out i believe in q1 uh, to do some training with you since i won't see you this year saltwater vacay jackie from prime vacations welcome one welcome all so this is a 12-step program for reclaiming your spirit of hospitality from the grasp of cynicism now interestingly uh, julia kennedy and i when we were setting up our schedule we were thinking well you know i don't know if this is going to be too close to the holidays and at first we had about 30 or 40 people we were way below booking pace but all of a sudden everybody signed up and we have our usual uh crowd not our record showing but a good turnout here with over 120. so i have a feeling a lot of you may find this topic particularly timely as we look back on the year so the calendar's just about to turn, folks. Just like that, 2023 is be almost beyond us, but we got 13 days left. But let us pause to reflect on the past, but also to imagine a better year. Now, there's one thing I can tell you, it won't be any better than the last year unless we do something about it. And there leads me to my favorite quote. Okay, let me read the quote and I'll tell you the story about this. It's kind of personal. 
It is not what happens to us, but what happens in us that makes the difference for us. There are so many things in this life that happen to us, and we have one or two choices. We can be reactive and we can be victimized, particularly in this context today, by the negativity of others, or we can change our outlook. Now, I must quote the late Reverend David Williamson and his uh, former wife at the time when he passed away, Galen Williamson, who was also a reverend. And they have been big players in my life at the Unity Church of Hollywood, Florida. Galen is actually now a psychotherapist. She has several degrees. She's actually up in Ocala, Galen Williamson Grigas. They're the ones who I have to credit with this quote. You'll hear me say this one a lot. And since we are talking about 12-step programs, I want to also give a shout out to Galen and her husband, David Grigas, because they were a big help of mine. Because today we're going to poke fun and we're going to laugh about the 12-step program, right? And People like to talk about this. You'll see jokes about it in movies, especially Shark Tales, if you remember that one for a few years back. But I actually have been benefited from a 12-step program because on January 14th, 2024, I will celebrate 10 years of being alcohol-free. I realized one day when I found myself having heart palpitations and shakiness, and I actually went to a doctor and asked about it. And I came to realize I was physically addicted to alcohol. So thank goodness I did not hit all the way to the bottom. I never had an accident or killed anybody or got a DUI, but I'm sure I hurt a lot of people. So I actually entered alcohol detox because I was physically addicted. It's dangerous just to stop on your own. And then I had to go to a, a rehab center. So I, at the time, was a member of AA. No longer part of the program, but if anybody ever wants to reach out to me, I will be the first one you can call because we're going to laugh about this program today, but I want to tell you it is a very serious thing for a lot of people out there. There's also NA, there's uh, Overeaters Anonymous, oh, there's all kinds of 12-step uh, programs. So let's have fun with it today. Let's have some laughs, but I did want to say on a serious note that um, I am out there for you. So remember, we cannot change those difficult negative people. Well, we can change how we react to them. And so that's what today is all about. Now, a question, are you experiencing any of these challenges? Guests who are paying higher rates? How was your rates in 2023? Do we push the rates out there a little bit? And at the same time, when guests have pay higher rates, along with that comes higher expectations. When we pay more, we expect more. Anybody have staffing challenges? A little bit short staff there, or you maybe have people that start the job, but they actually find it wasn't for them because we do have a big focus on quality of life and not everyone is a good fit for this industry. Tech upgrades that cause more challenges with guests than they resolve. I saw an interesting stat. It's actually quoted in my new article. By the way, if you're getting the newsletter, you'll get my new article from JD Power and Associates that came out with their 2023 report this summer. And, you know, they found that about, I think it was something like 40% of people had actually downloaded the app of a major hotel brand. And out of the 40 that downloaded it, something like, uh, maybe I have the numbers wrong, 40% um, actually used it to check in, okay? Now, out of the 40% that used that app at least one time to check in and not go to the front desk, 75% ended up contacting the front desk, okay? So a lot of those tech challenges that these tech vendors say are going to solve all of our problems, just move it to a different time. And so in the spirit of, of the 12-step program, we're going to take our heart that's about to be stolen away from the grasp of cynicism. We're going to have a 12-step program. We will no longer be cynical after Doug's class, at least not about those difficult guests, right? Now, if you know anything about a 12-step program, it all starts with admitting you have a problem. So if you related to the last slide of all the challenges, or maybe you have other challenges at your hotel, vacation rental company, or a resort, whatever your challenge is, if you have found yourself becoming a little bit cynical this year, please repeat after me. And if you're with a group, I want to hold everybody accountable because we must actually say the words. Repeat after me. I have become 
a sometimes cynical lodging industry employee. Doesn't that feel good? You admitted it in front of your peers and to yourself. So now step up, grab that white chip just for today. Day one of your new life of no longer being cynical about your guests. All right, folks, I hope to make you laugh and smile a few times. The first step is to understand it is okay to vent. We all need to vent. I love this picture. I use this one a lot. Sometimes we need to vent. Now, hopefully your boss, if I've done training for you on site, has listened to me because I always go and I go out and I tell people, you know, what your staff really needs. And here's a great way to do it. A primal screen therapy closet located somewhere near the customer service office, right behind the front desk or in the main office. And then you could go, excuse me, sir, I'll be right back with you, Mr. Guest. Go into there. Ah, a soundproof room, maybe a punching bag. Yeah. Maybe like a high tech version, you could project the face of an actual guest up there and beat them up. And then we step out and we feel better. Well, I don't know how many people actually did that, but pick someone, hopefully someone you can reciprocate with to be your go-to venting partner. Please pick someone other than the person who has to live with you, okay? Um, you know, we're probably, unless you live alone, I don't know who can afford to live alone in today's world. Rents, mortgages are so high everywhere. But whoever's there uh, probably has learned uh, fast enough never to say, so tell me, honey, how was your day? <laughs> so find someone else. If you're with a group, maybe you want to do this. If you're sitting in it, a lot of you do watch this in a, in a break room or an office or maybe a meeting room even. You know, who is your go-to person? I love to do this in our in-person classes. One, two, three, say the name of the person. One, two, three. <laughs> you might say a lot of the same people there. Certain people are really good listeners, but make sure to reciprocate for them. So once you have vented, do not ruminate. I love to study psychology. I actually studied a lot of psychology at University of Kentucky. And I thought it was actually, I just kind of took it because I needed those, what are they called? The, you know, the general credits. I forget now, I haven't been in college for a while. Electives. But I love to take sociology and psychology. And what's helped me the most in my job is psychology and sociology. In fact, it helps me in my personal life. So in psychology, they had this term ruminate. And according to Merriam Webster, retelling it makes you feel like you are actually reliving it. So tell one person, but don't tell another and go on and on and on. Because research has found in the field of psychology, when people ruminate on the past events, okay, what happens is you start to interpret situations in our current lives more negatively and we become hopeless about the future. So don't be that person. Maybe you're looking in the mirror right now and you're saying, ooh, Doug, that's me. Uh, or maybe you're thinking of a coworker, hey, send them the link to this webcast. Tell one person, go and tell Sally, but then go, don't go and tell Sandy and Chris <laughs> and Taylor. Tell one person and let it go, okay? Because if you retell it, you relive it, and then you come to expect that. And you come into work the next day going, oh my gosh, how many difficult, rude, nasty people do we have to deal with today? And you know what will happen if you come to work with those expectations? I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Like attracts like. <laughs> It's the law of attraction. You put that vibe out there and they will come right back to you. I often say when I work with call center clients, Rian, maybe you'll relate to this or Maberlin or maybe Laura Ruby, you know, ask your staff, have they ever noticed when they come into work in a bad mood? Let's say it's raining out, the traffic was horrible or your cat escaped and it's an indoor cat or you have a teenager pretty much every day and you come to work and you're not feeling it that day because you got disrespected by your teen or the cat ran away from you. And you come into work not feeling that positivity vibe. The phone system knows it. This is the best example in a call center. You know, there's something called ACD, automatic call distribution. Whoever has been off the phone the longest gets the next call coming in, but it don't feel that way on this day. 
because it feels like when you log into that phone system, it does a quick personality test on you. And it's like, oh, Doug's having a bad day. Zing! And every difficult caller goes right to them. Same thing at front desk. Yeah, they all wait in your line. So it is okay to laugh. Step three in our journey to 12 here. It is okay to laugh, but laugh in a way that does not disrespect guests. Celebrate the humorous things that are often clueless that guests ask us. Oh, this is my favorite part in my trainings. I usually love to sit down and pull up a chair. And, you know, I really should do this. Start taking notes and write a book of all the clueless things guests ask. Oh, here's some famous ones. Uh, they're calling December 18th. Hi, we're staying there on March the 12th. What is the weather going to be like on that day? Is it going to rain? Um, hello, we're calling a water, an oceanfront resort located in a natural setting. Do you have any mosquitoes there? Um, and another question, on your beach, do you have sharks in the ocean at your beach? Um, here's another one. Yes, the island of Hawaii or Kauai or Oahu. Uh, hi, I have a question. Is there water all the way around the island? Is there going to be snow? <laughs> okay, is there going to be snow in North America on April 15th? <laughs> Definitely not. So celebrate those things, laugh with our guests, or when they say, you know, what is this resort fee? I've never paid that. I have traveled all around the world and I have never paid a resort fee. Taxes, what's that for? I've never paid taxes on a room. Celebrate it, laugh at it, but not the people. Some people just don't know. Avoid falling into that trap. The trap of being disrespectful, of dissing your guests of treating them in a way that is, they are all, in fact, that's a statement a lot of people use, all guests these days, okay, what ends up happening when you think all guests are stupid and they're not, um, they're, that they ask silly questions and they're all trying to get extras, what happens is we develop this cynical attitude. I, I know a lot of the things I'm going to talk about today are, are talked about in the past webcast this year. This is almost like my greatest hits of the of the year because I'm going to pull in a lot of things. If you've been with me this year, we've talked about this before, the kutsu weed. The kutsu weed is a vine that grows out of control, mostly in the southeast United States. Now, I did some research on this. I found this weed was actually brought in from Asia in the, in the Dust Bowl era in the 1930s when before farming practices were perfected, people would not, farmers would not know to rotate crops so the soil would be depleted by one crop growing over and over again till eventually that crop could no longer grow and the, nothing grew because the vitamins and nutrients were depleted and it was a dust bowl so somebody got the brilliant idea to bring in kutsu and that's how kutsu came to the united states because it grew really fast anywhere <laughs> even on depleted soil so it escaped into the wild. If you drive along certain stretches, a lot, particularly in the Southeast US is where I see it the most, you will see one little piece of vine shoots up the nearest tree, goes to the top of the canopy in the forest, and it takes over the entire tree canopy. And the light below it is shut out. Everything becomes dark. And what does darkness do to life? It kills all the life below. So that's what I think happens when we let this thing of cynicism invade our culture. Call yourselves out on it. Managers, call your team out on it. When we start talking about this guest is so stupid and maybe you don't worse, you don't use the word stupid, maybe use other inappropriate labels that I will not say on a webcast, maybe use four-letter words. Now, I want to acknowledge right here what happens is you're impacting your culture. Now, I want to, um, actually, let me ask you a question, and then I'm going to acknowledge it. How would you finish this sentence if you're in a group together? Let's do it. Guest, these days, they all only complain to get a refund. Is that what you were thinking? Yeah. It may seem that way because we do have some guests who only complain to get a refund. All right? Now, I'm acknowledging that, and I get it, and I know it's real but it is not most guests. It is certainly not all guests. So if you have related to this topic, join us. <laughs> what do we got here? April 19th, just for you. 
successfully fielding legitimate complaints and how to stop the full refund scammer. There are out there. Recently, you know, we live in an HOA. Probably within the last year it was, I was at a social event and we had a nice, what I thought was a nice, sweet elderly lady come to one of the events. My wife, Kathy Cook, actually is on the social committee at the HOA. And she sat there with some of her other elderly friends. And, you know, I always try to make the rounds and especially the people who are kind of sitting there, you know, they weren't, um, they, they weren't mingling a lot. I wanted to make them feel welcome. So I plopped myself down at their table and I had a nice little chat. What do you do, Douglas? And I told him, as soon as I mentioned hotels, one of those sweet elderly ladies piped up and said, oh, hotels, uh, you know what my trick is? I travel. I always get my room for free. And I said, really? She said, yes. In fact, recently I stayed at a hotel and you know, at any time they have those little mini fridges, what I do is I just pull it out because you can almost always find a little bit of dust behind that mini fridge. I call that manager up to my room and I let him have it. I said, what is this? All this money I'm paying. Look at this dust behind the refrigerator. What happened? They comped me. I wanted to say, if I came to your house right now and moved your refrigerator, would there be dust behind it? So that's when I realized even sometimes seemingly sweet, kind people, this is not a one-time occurrence with her because she went on to tell me every time she stays at a hotel. It's actually how she prefaced the story. So yeah, we're going to talk about them, okay, and how to reject and do not accept. Also how to prevent, um, you know, how to prepare for their negative review. They're going to do a bad review anyway. Don't comp them because they're going to complain anyway. Just stand up for yourself in the review. Join us on April 19th. Now, step number five, understand, yes, complaints is a numbers game. There is always going to be a percentage of guests who complain, always. Now, some people are just negative sorters, okay? I, I, I use this picture a lot. To me, she looks like the perfect kind of pessimistic, we call a negative sorter, somebody who complains, but like that's just their personality. You have guests like that, don't you? You're looking at your coworker right now and some of you are actually saying names and you're thinking of that guest that comes and stays every year, at least once a year, or if you're a corporate hotel, like some of the ones here and uh, managed by the companies previously mentioned, and you have that guest, she comes back or he comes back the second and third, um, the second and fourth weeks of the year or the third Wednesday of every month. And you know what's coming. They complain, complain, complain. Or they come and stay with you every year. And maybe they even ask for you. And the last thing they do is hand you a list or email you a list of all the things that went wrong in their room. And then they say, I'd like to book again next year so I can come back and complain some more. That's just the way she is. We all have someone like this in our personal life, in your family. Yeah, you're thinking of someone right now, aren't you? Yeah, so am I. So they're perfectly, most people are perfectly satisfied with their experiences. Think about this. I always do this math when I'm on site training clients. Last week I was at Castle Hill Inn up in Newport, Rhode Island. And then I went on to Condo World down in um, the Myrtle Beach area. And I, I don't know if I talked about this at Condo World. We were doing sales training as well. But I ask you to think about now, you, how many guests do you have on a sold out night? Okay, so take, if you're a hotel, take your number of rooms times the average number of guests per room. Probably anywhere from 1.5 to 1.8, 1.9. If you're a resort, it's probably 2.5 or higher. If you're one of our many vacation home rental management companies, property management companies, some of you have, let's just take it easy here, 200 accommodations, and the average house has three bedrooms. That is 600 bedrooms. How many guests per bedroom on a sold out night? You count the kids in the bunk beds, you count the people on the air mattresses. You know, 200 rental homes, you might have 800 guests. In either case, do you think they're gonna all be nice? <laughs> That's the dream world, folks. That is not the real world. And one person out of all of them calls you up, okay? 
but I, it may sometimes feel, you ever feel like this guy? Like, oh my gosh, everyone is complaining. Our company is falling apart. We are a horrible business. It may feel that everyone is complaining, but in reality, remind yourself, the number of complaints is very, very low. Let's go back to our um, 200 room hotel on a sold out night, 1.5 guests, 300 people. Let's say you get 10 complaints. That's very low. 290 people had a perfectly fantastic stay. Right, I don't think they call. You ever get this call? Hello, this is Kennedy up in 301. Just wanted to call and tell you everything is working perfectly today. Yeah, or vacation home rental company. Hello, this is Kennedy in the exquisite um, Sunset View home. And I just wanted to tell you there are no ants on the balcony. The, the AC is cooling off perfectly. The remote controls are turning on the TV and the refrigerator quickly cooled all of my beer. Thank you. You don't get that call, do you? So it is a numbers game, folks. Expect it, okay? And then also realize in step six, the frustrations and challenges that people have when they travel and think about all they go through. You have some perfectly nice, kind people that go through tremendous things. You know, anybody travel this weekend or you had guests that travel this weekend anywhere on the East Coast? Floods, rains, storms, blowing the cars off to where you had to pull over. Um, we're going to have weather delays. Last year, I just saw Southwest Airlines paid a couple, I don't know, a hundred and some million dollars. They were fined because of the travel meltdown during the holidays last year. The roads are packed. Let's say it's a good day but you really, really, really have to be there, that is the day your plane will have the mechanical delay. Or um, you have a lot of work to do, talking about business travelers now, on the plane, you have a to-do list, and next to you is that really cute baby that it's their first trip, and they're crying the whole time, okay? I get it, I had kids, I know, but these are the frustrations people go through, and by the time you see them, now, the other thing is there may be a backstory. I remember, you know, the resorts I worked at, I would think, my gosh, everyone should be happy. I would be happy to be staying here. Wow. And why are guests so cranky? I thought they were all on vacation or a business trip. You know, when I was 20 years old working at the Marriott Griffin Gate in Lexington, Kentucky, I thought a business trip sounded fantastic. And now I just did the numbers last year. I did 61 days of training, which meant I was gone approximately 122 nights. And if you divide 365 by 122, I was gone one third of my life on the road. Fortunately, I have a great relationship with my adult kids who have since moved away. My hermit crab still loves me. Yes, I've had a hermit crab for 22 years. Um, Kat still comes to the door. The dog is asleep with my wife. And thankfully, Kathy Cook is always waiting and very independent. But I want you to think about that. Now, by the way, I'm not the most intensive road warrior. There's a lot of people that leave the house every Sunday or Monday and they come home every Thursday or Friday, like 40, 45 weeks out of the year. And when people are on vacation, you know, you may look at people and let's say you work at a luxury hotel or a luxury rental company, you may think these people got it made. Well, the people that have all the money, they probably don't have much time. My father, who would be actually 100 next May, and he gets smarter every year. I lost him uh, in 2009 when he was 85. But he said, son, in this life, when you're a man, he said, a man, because I'm a boy. He said, son, you got one or two things, money or time. Because the people with all the money, they got no time for their families. So make sure you keep your priorities right. And I remember that to this day. So you see the wealthy person driving up in the fancy car or, you know, and maybe you're wondering, well, they have it made. Does not necessarily mean their life is any easier than yours and not any more joyful. When I travel the world, sometimes I find the people that had the least means seem to me to be the happiest people I ever met. So before we judge others, 
realize they may be there for a vacation or a business trip, but it might be to lay off or close a location, settle a lawsuit, to finalize divorce papers for a hospital stay, or the worst imaginable, a family member who's in a hospital. For me, that's way worse than me being in a hospital. And number seven, we're how over halfway there. Remember always, we're emotional creatures in a physical world. And remember, we all get affected. I don't know if anyone will own up to this. I will get a little cranky. Does anyone get a little cranky when you're tired? Does anyone get a little cranky when you're hungry? Does anyone get a little cranky with loved ones, especially when you are tired and hungry or they are tired and hungry? Now think about what people go through to walk into your lobby or to walk in if you have keyless entry to go straight in. Think about what time they woke up, get ahead of traffic, or let's say somebody took a nine o'clock flight, not even that early. Well, you know, you're supposed to be there two hours early. That's 7 a.m. You know you got to commute. How far does the airport do they live? Now, how do they look? If it's a man, did they shave? If it's a lady, did she fix her hair? Yeah, okay. And they woke up super early. And think about what they endured. People traveling with the family, what do they hear five minutes from the house? We've gone through that a lot in these webcasts this year. Are we there yet? He's touching me. He's on my side. I need the charging cord. There's no internet. Step seven, remember when we, instead of being reactive to continue on this, when we realize that people are emotional, we can trigger positive um, reactions that bring out the best in others. And when we bring out the best in others, it brings out the best in ourselves. Another one I talk about a lot, and maybe you've heard me mention, I don't remember, but hospitality is like a flashlight. And when you go into a dark room and you shine that flashlight straight into, stand in front of a mirror, shine it directly at that mirror, and what happens to that beam of light, it comes right back at you. In fact, it's even brighter than the beam going in. And that's what happens when we make it our job to bring out the best in others. Try that tonight when you turn off the lights at home. So if you understand that we're emotional creatures and we make it our job to bring out the best in others, guess what? We have a lot more fun. That was actually my book. You can get it on Amazon. It's called, Do You Really Like Working With People? You ever see me do that gesture on LinkedIn? It's a question. Do you really love working with people? And it's the five principles for our personal fulfillment and hospitality excellence. And I talk about a lot of my core beliefs in there because I believe it makes us have more fun. It is self-serving. You gotta work anyway, okay? And unless you win the lottery, good luck with that. One in 330 million if you play the Powerball. Why not make the best of it? Step eight, make it your job to flip the vibe, okay? We love to say this. This has been my saying of the last year. Imagine your spirit of hospitality flowing out like a signal on a cell phone tower. Okay, in fact, time for a sip of water. Oh, what does my cup say? It says, flip the vibe, baby. Where are you, Majestic? We added the baby thing when I was at Majestic. 5G positivity, okay? And I want you to imagine yourself as a powerful force because you are. We have all, think about it. I'm pretty sure everyone here has flipped the vibe of a guest. You ever have a guest that starts out complaining, maybe even shouting, right? And then by the end of that conversation, they're like, thank you so much. Or maybe they come back the next day and they apologize. You have the choice every day, okay? When you come into work, you can be a weak analog signal and be victimized by others, okay? And you can have it be one of those days. Oh. And the more you have that mindset that today is going to be one of those days, that's ACD phone system will send you the negative guess. Everybody that walks in will come up to you if they're unhappy because you put that vibe out there. You're a weak flip phone. Power up your positivity. We're going to talk about how to do that in the last step today. Make it one of those days and flip the vibe of others.
By the way, if you like mugs, go to Etsy, the KTN online shop. Little plug there. Now, step nine, make hospitality a habit. These are the communication essentials. When we go out and teach classes, we teach the hospitality part and we teach the communications part, hospitality communications. To me, these are the guest service pillars. We call them that in our Heart of Hospitality certification class, which you can get individually or for your company. The fingers represent the tools and the heart in this logo. Hey, oh, it's upside down. The hand holding a heart. The heart is authentic kindness. So I'm gonna share three of the tools because these are all really important. Use these daily and you will flip the vibe. It will help you flip the vibe of others if you're sincere. So greet others with enthusiasm. This shows confidence and makes everyone feel special. And say, good afternoon, welcome, hello, how are you? Do not say check it in, last name in the credit card. Um, do you have a reservation? <laughs> um, Welcome, hello, how are you? Where are you coming in from? Oh, hi, baby, what's your name? Oh, what a cute puppy you have. Oh, Dallas Cowboys shirt. Oh, don't talk about that, they lost last night. Um, but yeah, check the schedule before you ask about short sports teams. This shows confidence. This is what makes people feel special. Be enthusiastic, grab that eye contact and hold it. And if you grab that eye contact and hold it, what we tend to do in United States, this is actually a fact that has been measured by sociologists. I read a lot of random stuff. The average eye contact in the United States is two seconds. Here's how it goes. Hello, two. Hi, how are you today, two. Hello, one, two. That's what we do. What I wanna challenge you today is to hold to the three or the four second count. Because if you do that and say, good afternoon, hello, how are you? And if you do that, the person will either hold the eye contact or they'll look away and look back and you're still looking at them and you're smiling. And they will smile too. Smiles happen naturally if we hold that contact and you make it through to the four second. And if you've been with me before, now I'm referencing all of these today, but at the end, I'm gonna show you our YouTube channel where Julia from our marketing coordinator team um, is put all of these webcasts in our library. So if you have slower, you're working the next couple of weeks and it's slower during certain days, check them out. We actually gave scientific evidence that when you smile makes you happy. Yes, I said that correct. We know when we're happy, we smile, but when we smile, it actually tricks our bodies into thinking we're happy. I'm gonna give a shout out to Ashley from Merida Inn Grand Dunes. I saw Ashley last week when I was in town. And it's the only four star, one of only two four star hotels in Myrtle Beach. And I stopped by to see Ashley. They're trying to, they're a mystery shopping client in the, res she's in reservations. She reminded me she has been with my classes for nine years. And she said, oh, Doug, I love your messages on hospitality. She said, I've even taken it outside of work because now when I go into a store, the grocery, the quick mark, I try to hold that eye contact and I smile. We had a wonderful chat. Try it the next time you go for your Slurpee or your fancy coffee or whatever you buy at your store. I like uh, slushies myself, but they'll say, hello, how are you today? Good, yeah, I'm good. And say, I'm doing fantastic, how are you? and hold that eye contact, they're gonna look away, and they're gonna look back, and you're still looking at them, and they'll smile, and they're gonna feel it. And then at that time, I say, thank you for being here, especially if it's late at night, or early in the morning, or a holiday. So listen attentively, let people know you're fully present, they will know it. When you're truly there with them, be all focused on them for a moment, put the phone down, and just be present. So let's bring it back in-house, whether you're talking to a guest on the phone and you can actually smile on the phone, it will make you sound happier or in person or you're walking through the lobby or if you're at a large resort or vacation rental company and you wear that brand logo. Okay, step 10, apologize, empathize. Oh, even I got it wrong. Empathize before you apologize. 
We do this in our Heart of Hospitality certification. We teach the EARS method, which is empathize, apologize, and resolve here, and then make sure they're satisfied. And then we role play it. And almost invariably in the role play, people falling right back to an apology and, oh, I'm so sorry that happened to you and I apologize. And they say it in a real enthusiastic way because they just went through the training, but they forget the most important part, which is the empathy part. That is what defuses them. I can understand how you feel and I can imagine I would feel the same way too if it were me. And then I apologize for what you've experienced. Now, this does not admit guilt. This does not say we were wrong. It just shows our intentions were good. So apologize, apologize for the traffic, apologize for their late flight, apologize for the weather, especially at a resort. Oh, I apologize for our weather. It's been raining so long. I can just imagine how I would feel if it were my vacation, okay? Except empathize first. Now, when that happens, the guy's like, okay, well, I know it's not your fault. You're actually being very nice. I love this expression. How many of you have heard a guest say this? You know you're doing the right thing. Step 11, power of release over negativity. Break that chain. I love it. The chain is broken and it turns to doves, the sign of peace. We actually have a whole class on this last year. It's on the YouTube channel. So I'm just gonna say in our greatest hits collection here of the 12 steps, no one can make you angry, no one can make you upset, no one can insult you unless you give them the power to do so. So remember that because when you go home and you ruminate and you bring that into your house and you tell your kid, your roommate, your significant other, domestic partner, your wife, your parent, your child, did I cover all possibilities? And you actually, you tell them all, <laughs> and then you bring it back the next day, you become one of them. So break that chain, use your power of release. Tell one person, go to the primal scream therapy closet, but remember all the other guests who are super nice, super kind. There's at least one that day that said, just wanted to thank you, we had a fantastic stay. And then you've got the other 90% they didn't call because nothing went wrong and they just left. Don't let the negativity take you down the drain. Use your power of release. Your 5G positivity signal, imagine that is your force field. If you like Marvel comics, I remember when I was a kid, I actually read comics and I love the Fantastic Four. Susan Storm, the invisible woman, she could turn invisible and that allowed her to do some sneaky things for the villains. But she could also, her other power was the force field. And she would, if a missile was coming or a giant object was gonna crush uh, Reed and the thing and Johnny, the fire guy, um, Johnny Flame, she would get them all, gather them and put out her force field to protect her, okay? And that's what we can do with our 5G positivity to deflect it and release it. And now to close out, our last of the 12 steps, start your day with gratitude. Gratitude to me is a superpower. It has become a superpower for me. And I wanna suggest a new habit for you today. You get nothing out of your time with me and maybe you're wiser than me and you figured this out a long time ago, but I started this habit somewhere around COVID when COVID hit and we really thought we would lose our business and be, um, no one would ever, no hotel would be able to pay us. We had to lay off over 20 people, including my mother-in-law. I started a new habit. And when I picked up the phone in the morning, you know, my phone wakes me up and I got my email. First thing I do would be open that work email. Yeah, and then I scroll over to my LinkedIn account and then I would do something to really make me happy. I would look at the headline news <laughs> but i started a new habit and i did it this morning this monday december 18th i did this i press snooze but i don't go back to sleep i lay there for a moment and i think of all the things i have to be grateful for now you know when you hit the big 6-0 and i won't say my exact age but it is after 
all of a sudden, you know, yeah, you start to think, ah, I'm grateful I woke up. But even our very youngest people, I'm sure you've had loss. And I'm not just talking about the next generations up. Life comes with unexpected challenges today. Be grateful you woke up. I want to speak with, about a woman that I met in a class in June in a conference I spoke at in Orlando. There was probably 500 people. And I talked about gratitude. And I started having this person follow me both on my personal Facebook, which you're invited to do, or my LinkedIn. And she was so happy. She had just had a new baby. She had two kids that were a little bit older, like preteens, beautiful human, nice family. And one day she posts that she has been diagnosed with stage four brain, brain cancer. Not even, I don't think, mid thirties. And I almost, the last first time I told this story, Majestic Resorts, I started shedding tears just with the thought of that, you know, when death comes and you get older, you become tougher and you know it's just part of life. But a young person who has not yet raised their kids, when, if you know who I'm talking about, because some of you actually work with this person, I saw the registration list. What amazes me is her posts. She tells her journey and she had her surgery and she is, as far as I can read between the lines, recovering, hopeful for time, if not even perhaps a cure. Well, what has amazed me since she first made the announcement almost every day is a post about gratitude. And I think that is what got her through. So start with the basics, folks. If you're not feeling it today, be grateful that you woke up. Okay. Did you wake up in a bed? Did you have a roof over your house? What is, I saw yesterday, the homeless rates are skyrocketing because of all of the housing crises that we have, especially in major cities. Okay, however you feel about immigration, I don't know, but there's people on the streets of cities around the United States with children. They didn't wake up in a house. They didn't even have a blanket. Be grateful for the little things. If you start your day with gratitude, it's almost like your power bank, power bank for your 5G positivity phone. And that will power you up through the worst parts of your day. And your power bank will hold that charge for a full day if you start every day with gratitude. Be grateful that you woke up. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our 12-step program to finish out our year in the spirit of hospitality. Again, if you do have time, send an email to these companies, or even if you're not a client of theirs, send them a shout out on LinkedIn, tag them if you know how to do it. Just do a post and do at sign in their company name. I hope this has helped you reach back your spirit of hospitality. Do not let the meanies win. Do not let them rob your joy. Join us in January for front desk upselling. In February, how to quote higher rates and overcome objections about rate, rates and availability. And then hotel group sales. We're going to do one just for you in March on how to have uh, a successful site tours because they're coming back. If you've missed any of our webcasts, they're all on our YouTube channel. Go to YouTube, put in Kennedy Training Network. Thank you, Julia Kennedy, our marketing director, and my daughter, which I'm very proud of. Um, if you're interested in on-site training, conference presentations, live sales coaching, um, mystery shopping or call scoring, and assessments, we would love to have you. Have a fantastic holiday season. Hanukkah's over. I don't know, um, not every world religion has a holiday this time of year, depending on how the calendar turns. But if you celebrate Christmas, have a Merry Christmas. All of you have a Happy New Year. We'll see you again in January. And thank you for being with us. I'm grateful.